Hey, this is Max. This is a CSR2 video on some of the things I do for tuning to particularly deal with live lobby. Um, some of these tuning techniques can also be used for uh, basic trials and uh, your basic restriction trials, custom trials, and other things. One of the first thing is <clears throat> in setting up a car, generally you can start off with what I like to call and what is known on the internet as a TNT tune, which is basically a tire nitrous transmission only set up and tuned based off of it. Because a lot of times with CSR, the only things you can tune really are the nitrous transmission and tires. The other parts does add performance, engine, turbo, intake does add performance, but it doesn't always add it in a steady manner where the tune can be maximized after the part is added. So without getting into the other parts, your first step should be able to do is tune a tire nitrous transmission setup because that gives you the lowest PP and a decent performance without having to get into a lot of fusions, a lot of other parts, and many times, even at this level, the car will perform well enough to get through uh, your basic trials. Uh, in fact, for some, some of the restriction trials, you really need to do these setups because they tell you you cannot go over 250 or 235 pp, and that really restricts what you can do. The same concept applies to Tempest 2, where you're given a set of limits on how high you can add parts. Before you add any parts, you should always tune tire nitrous transmission first to reach the maximum performance possible off of these three, because no matter what you add, you can only tune the car if you have these three at the level where it tunes available, which is stage three tires, stage four trans, and stage two nitrous. Most cars in the game loves nitrous, so nitrous is good to have on many cars, although there are exceptions. For example, I found that when you have a car like the 235i Coupe, until you're maxing it out, that extra stage of nitrous at the end doesn't really help it that much. You can also have certain cars that basically spend the tire too much when you add the nitrous at a high level. So those you probably want to avoid pushing for high nitrous stages, but most cars, almost all of them uh, out there, prefer some nitrous, if not a lot of nitrous. So once you have the basic setup, you have a tune level where it gives you a certain amount of EVO. And that EVO point can give you an idea of what your car's performance potential is at a given level of upgrade. So when I upgrade a car and I look at it, and I see that the EVO points are really high at a given performance point, then I tend to want to leave the car at that level when I take it into live because I find that when you do that and you go to live racing, your car tend to perform very well and do very well uh, against most of the opponents that you will run into. Uh, it's just a matter of the fact that your car's ultimate potential should be limited by the PP points and I think the computer knows that. I'm not trying to tell you I think this is how uh, the matchmaking works. We know it works off a of dyno, but even at a given dyno, there should be, I think the computer knows that if you have a 400 PP or 300 PP P1 car running 13s versus a 231 PP car running 13s, when it lobbies you in this chain of cars that you tend to find in the lobby, it'll put you somewhere where you tend to be more competitive, at least initially. I mean, the other thing is that you don't get bumped as quickly when you have the lower PP rating and the higher EVO, simply because your car's ultimate potential shouldn't be greater than some of the faster cars in the lobby. That's my theory and that's my observation over time. I think it holds true so far to every lobby I brought my cars into it in different tiers, whether it's T1, T3, T5. 
a maxed car is a, is a different animal than a partially built car. So most of us don't run around with fully maxed cars from the get-go. Learning how to tune your car for a limited amount of PP and getting the advantage through Evo is going to help you when you go into live lobbies and try to compete. And to get it competitive, one of the first things you should do, again, is to work on a good TNT tune to get an idea where your car falls in performance relative to its PB level and EVO level. If I can get somebody to actually accept the race, I want to just kind of showcase a basic TNT tune without even full stage 5 can be very competitive in uh, the lobby. Uh, Storm Rider, let's, let's challenge him and see what he can do. Whoa, that's got to be a graphics glitch right there. A white KJ boss card. I know it's not white. I mean, it just looks white on here. If he turns out white on the track, too, that'll be funny. <laughs> ah, see, he turned back to red. I knew that. Now, my car is TNT only, right? So, its potential is only so much, but it should be able to perform relatively well against most of the cars in this class. Not against KJ that time. I think he actually launched it. Yeah, 13 3 So he's running pretty good. But that's not really surprising. Um, I know I can take KJ's car to launch with Nitrous in first and basically uh, knock out most competitors. Let's try... Well, let's jump out of this lobby because I don't see a lot of really other competitors here. That I can run with. Oh, keeps putting me back here. Let's try this guy again. Okay, I guess he's not ready to race. How about this guy? Now, I've been racing this uh, <coughs> GTI for about 40, 40, uh, no, about 60 wins so far. Uh, maybe with four or five losses thrown in there. So, there is a chance the car has been bumped up, but my experience has been in the lobby is that generally it's not um, having much of a problem competing against cars in its class. Right there, easy. Um, of course, that car had no stars, so its potential is lower. 13.6, I'm running 13.4. The dyno of this car is 13.6 as well, so it is in the range of where the dyno should be. So that's one car. Again, this is only with the TNT tune. Uh, no other upgrades used. So it's pretty competitive. And again, I've used this car in this lobby for probably, like I said, 60 wins in a row. With, well, maybe not in a row, but with two or three losses thrown in only. So TNT tunes for most cars can give you a good idea where it falls in the grand scheme of things as far as the basic performance is concerned. Now, once we get past that, we can start playing with some of the things in the tuning. And one of the things I found is that in live lobbies, you always want to beat Dino. If you can't beat the Dino, you will have problems beating your opponents. And the way you can beat Dino is, one, sometimes you just drive better. Okay, you can beat the Dino that way. Some cars are hard to drive. This uh, VX, for example, it can be tuned in a few different ways. You can tune it to its maximum performance by simply putting the top speed, which is around 190 something with the current settings, to where the final gear is. And that'll give you its theoretical best performance. Anytime you play with that, you also want to play with the traction. Make sure that you're not putting too much traction and or too little. And here we go. We're down to 12.7. However, that is nice in theory. You look at it, you go, oh, wow, 12.7, that's great. That's a good time to be in a lobby in. It's a winnable time. Um, thing is, you still got to run the time. 
and this card is not the easiest to get that. In fact, it's kind of difficult. I'm probably going to be a little off from that in this slower side. And that's not good. For live racing, that's really not good for you to have that. So, one of the things I discovered playing with tunes is that sometimes you get what I call a grip induced evil drop. How does that work? Well, let's put the grip down to a really low point. Let's just put at zero. Anytime you have your max evil tune, you put the grip to zero. And you have to balance the power to the grip. So this technique doesn't always work for max cars. In fact, a lot of max cars you can't do this with. Some you could, some you cannot. But what you're doing is you're dropping the final drive, which at some point gets you to a point where there will be an instant cliff drop of evil points like that. See right there? Boom. One point difference. Cliff drop. Well, how is that important? Well, it just changed your dyno from 1307 to 12.9. Okay? That's not a big drop, but remember your theoretical best actually is somewhere in the 12.7 range. Right? 12.8, 12.7. We saw it earlier. So what you're doing is you're giving yourself a margin of error here to get a dyno beating run. Because the car is still capable of running that, it just has too much grip. So the computer thinking, look, if you launch it like you should, you're going to bog and you're going to run slower. You're actually going to run a slower time. So it sets you in a slower lobby dyno. Now, you don't have to have it this hard on the grip. And there's a reason why I'm raising the grip. By raising it, I put it back up to where it was. But in the reverse, what you can keep doing is you can keep dropping your final drive. And again, find the cliff point for the car. This is what I call a standard grip-induced dyno beating tube. Okay, it's usually one point difference. Now it's a 13177. Let's test run. If I tuned it right with the cliff drop, I should be able to run right around 13 to 12.9 with a good driving technique without launching a perfect. Let me show you what happens when you launch perfect. Boom. Zero. Okay. You get a instant stall. Uh, ooh. It's stuck. Hold on. That's annoying. You basically stall the car at a zero RPM launch. This happens to some cars even with a good tune. In fact, some of the cars will do this at its optimal tune. And that's not a good thing. Okay. If it drops to zero RPM, you're going to run slower. So if you're doing a cliff drop grip tune like this, you're going to need to launch it with a little bit higher RPM. Somewhere around 5,000 would be good. And you drive it otherwise kind of like normal. Shoot your nitrous, bounce your needles. I mean, don't bounce your needles. Um, shift, shift in, shift through. That wasn't the best drive in the world, uh, but... Let's see if it beats dyno. Yes, it did. Right? 1306 isn't the best drive, but what's our dyno? 13177. You're beating it by two tenths, just like that. You can actually beat it by more if you drive it just right. Um, for example, when you have this kind of lower gear ratio, sometimes it pays to hit the nitrous earlier if you see that it hangs in first gear. Or, in this case... It may actually do just as well with a third gear nitrous to kind of push the car into the higher top speed near the end, which may give us just as good a run. All right, it didn't really change anything. So this is where you can now consistently beat your dyno. Okay, even though if you look at it from the other setting, where let's put it back up a point. 
or two. That's exactly where you should be, but you're not going to run that. It's very hard on many cars to get that dyno time that it's showing. And this little bit of a cliff drop tune could be a lifesaver in live and allow you to perform in a more competitive manner. That is only a partial cliff drop and it's not a huge cliff drop. You, some cars will have a very large one. Instead of 100, 200 points, you're going to have a 600 EVO point drop. Well, that's see, now I just ran a 12,997. But the dyno says 12,993. You're not beating it. You're actually slower than the dyno, which in live means your chances are worse for winning versus going slightly slower, but you're being pushed into a much slower lobby. There's actually a difference between the 12.9 lobby and the 13.1 lobby as well, so it's, it's kind of a good spot to be. What I was trying to say is that at some point you could have a huge cliff drop. Instead of maybe 200 points, you'll get a 500 point drop. Okay, that's nice. That means your car can beat Dino by quite a lot. And there's a few cars out there that'll do this uh, very well. The problem is at some point you're going to hit an evil point looking like this at 100 points. You're making no RP. It stinks. So you don't want to end up that low. Usually if a car is well set up and the cliff drop tweak is done right, you can maintain almost a thousand RP and still get your dyno beating tune. The other one, and this is the one that people recommend all the time online, is what I call the negative evil tune. Okay, that, that's that's a no-brainer tune. What it what it is is simple. You just put it to 2.0, and you get this huge negative point. Your dyno says you stink, but you will outrun it by a huge amount. Why is that good? Well, if you're out to just rob somebody of their money, you can go into a 15-second lobby and do this. see where we end up and I know it's not going to run 15 14 one woohoo on a what dyno 14 106 right what do we dyno 15 two that's a second quicker that my friends is your 200k bet negative evo tune where people come and go give me your money and almost always you will get their money in fact um, I will take it to live ones and let's test it out against somebody in an actual lobby and see what it does. Now this car, I've been running the clip drop tune for a little bit and the computer does adjust for that. So these guys are not going to run 15s. Okay? They're probably going to be in the 14 second range, but they probably are not running 14 flat. So if I can find somebody to demonstrate it on, I'll use him. We can now take a look at what the effect is when you have a negative EVO tune in a live lobby. The effects are not always positive. I'll explain in a second. Oh, 40,000, I'll take it. He probably has a pretty good tune, something that he's pretty confident can take me out. Now, he may get lucky or he may not. Let's take a look. Goodbye. I'll give him this win. I'm not worried about $40,000, but I don't want to cheat the guy out of his money. The point is, this tune had me way ahead. If I didn't downshift, I would have ran a 14-1 or better against his 15-1. Congratulations, you won $40,000 on TV. So... This is what the negative evil tune does. But you also notice we had really, oh wait, we, we didn't win, so I can't show you the RP. Hold on, I gotta go back and win one. Give me a second. Let's go back and win one. Um, he's busy. Hmm, I was gonna challenge him again, get my money back, but let me see if I can get somebody else. Uh, Gilberto S. I'll take Gilberto. 
What's funny is it's usually in these kind of lobbies where people are running these kind of tunes that you'll run into guys betting you the big money uh, because they're running a partial negative or completely negative tune or they're, they're just new at this and they're overly confident, one or the other. But if you win with a setup like what we have, and you will win because your car is so far greater in performance than what theirs can do that you almost can't lose. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. You can't lose. You're basically here taking people's you know, chances of winning away from them without really even trying. The downside is this. A negative evil tune at most will get this kind of RP from a life win. It doesn't matter who you beat. You're not getting the points. Plus, it has another negative point in that, as I indicated, the computer does track what you run. Okay, Each time you win with that massive gap on the lobby's time range, the lobby is 15-something. And really, the best you should be able to run in there should be a, a two, three tenths off from that number, not a second off. So when you run a second faster, it's going to bounce you up quickly into faster and faster lobbies each time you win. So eventually what will happen is you end up in a lobby that is actually a second quicker than what your car can run with the perfect setup. And you're now totally screwed and this car is no longer useful to you for anything other than a negative tune. This is why I recommend against negative tune at all times, but I'm not totally against a grip induced clip drop because if it's not too extreme it gives you the edge you need generally to win you're not going to win them all there's going to be a few guys in your lobby running what is essentially negative tunes and always kicking your butt but you're going to have to lose a few anyway to keep your rp up so it's not a big deal but with the clip drop tune which is not as competitive meaning i can get into this lobby and lose there's not a guaranteed win but it gives you a better chance to win, and it certainly allows me to at least always go under my dyno rather than over my dyno, which you don't want. Another GTR. A lot of these guys uh, got them for this uh, season. Looks like they're all running. So now I'm running the cliff drop tune, not the negative tune. Hopefully my negative tune win earlier didn't bump me already in the lobby and put me in a lobby where I just can't win. But We'll find out in a second. Oop, not a good shift. Hopefully he won't catch me too quick. Now the GTR is a late bloomer on the 2017. They accelerate much, much quicker at the end than in the beginning. Hey, here he comes. Ah! Ah! Okay, I win. All right. So by doing the cliff drop tune, my car is, and that wasn't even a good run. Um, I didn't really beat my Dino by much, but it still put me in a lobby that's actually ranged from 13, I would say 13.1 to 13.3. So he actually ran poorly, but the the range should be right around there. You notice the RP is a lot better. Let's try one more, just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. Uh, now these guys are usually hard to beat, so let's take one of these guys on and see what happens. That's a five star and this car actually runs very well in, um, it, it gets what I consider to be like a positive um, matchmaking in live meaning it tends to put it in a more competitive lobby than it would do for me oops I screwed that up so that's the what not to do when you have a cliff drop tune which is launch too early and get beaten down because you cannot launch the car at all. All right, now I'm going to have to try again. He ran a 13.3. I know that's beatable by my tune, so let me challenge him again and hopefully don't embarrass myself as much this time. Finding the cliff drop tune is unique to each car. You have to play with the balance of grip, which is as much, as much tire stages as possible and as well as getting the right amount of engine power to
to go with the tune. Wow, he's running faster this time. I might not beat him again. Let's see what you run this time. Oh, look at that. But I did manage to beat my uh, Dino, but his car actually beat Dino more. So he was playing with me last round. That bastard. Oh well. Like I said, this car actually gets pretty favorable uh, matchmaking in most lobbies. Plus, I may not be actually in a great lobby for my car, but it doesn't matter. It's still worth uh, trying to with the uh, better better um, than Dino runs. I probably could get a 1299 run once I play with how to drive it a little more. Or I can tweak the final drive ratio thing again to make it a little bit more of a gap on the cliff drop. But bottom line is, it's not a, it's not really that bad um, for this setup to get. Oh, that's a bad one. So bouncing your needle on perfect is always bad for performance. It's just not a good thing to do. So I ran slower that time. All right. So after a few losses, I may be able to get put in a different lobby potentially. Let's try a different lobby. Hmm. Let's see where the computer put me. <laughs> That's a funny one. I like that. That's probably somebody running a downtune of some sort. Um, I'm sure the GTR is capable of it. I haven't played with it for that. But I may test out a few different tunes to see where that ends up. This GTR is the type that tops out, it's a 2015, so you don't catch it at the beginning of the track, you always catch it at the end of the track. Okay, oh, I won one. So, by losing one or two, it kind of pushed me down a little bit in the lobby. But again, the car is not going to be competitive in every situation, it's competitive in many situations. I could still tweak this, but at some point this becomes a too low a number for it to be worthwhile to run the car in live. This car needs a lot more fusions to be able to get a, a grip based tune and still make good RP. So I'm not going to mess with it too much at this point. But again, it's quite capable of a grip induced dyno beating tune. Here's uh, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a variance again. This one, what I'm going to do is now put top gear into six rather than seven okay and again bump this up a little bit but not enough to trigger a full increase because it will at some point jump up right there now we're talking about a 300 point drop look at that All right so what's the difference 12.9 13, almost 13.3. That's a much bigger gap. Again, you're still capable of doing a 12.9, so you could do this again in live and get the same get the same effect. And we're still in the same lobby. Notice that. Interesting. Let's try him out. Now, because the gap is a little greater, that means that your grip is even greater, so you cannot launch this car anywhere near perfect. If you do, you're going to lose. And he's not racing. Where's that guy with the funny money signs? Oh, he disappeared. I was going to try him out. I'll probably lose that one, though, but it would be funny. Uh, come on, nobody's ready to race anybody. Really? Everybody's busy trading. Oh, 
Now, this is a T5 that can do the same kind of technique as my car to be dyno. Part of the reason I like that car. Again, by playing with grip and final drive, you can adjust a hurricane to beat dyno by a variety of amounts. I'm not sure I should have shifted that early, but what's done's done. Let's hope the hurricane doesn't catch up. It usually won't because it's not a fast accelerating car at the end. All right. RP is not great because now my EVO is so low. The best you're going to get when you're at this kind of EVO is about this kind of RP. But again, easily beating Dino now by a bigger margin than before. Plus, the game probably knows that and keeps me down at a slightly lower level. Now, this guy is not the uh, best run you could probably face in here. I want to see one of these legendary guys. But you're starting to understand, hopefully, what I'm talking about with the the grip-induced dino-beating um, tunes. This is what I mean. It, and this is infinitely adjustable up to the point of where the grip and the engine power overcomes each other. When you're adding too much additional power, you can overcome the grip very at some point. So at some point, this is no longer able to sustain the type of drop that we're looking for because the power level of the car becomes too high. As you bump up the power, you can sometimes see this jump up. See how it just jumped? That's because now the power overcame the grip. In this situation, you have to now go back and lower the grip again to play with the same idea. This is, again, now I have to lower this a few points to get back to this. Okay? And two points up, three points up, we get oh, four points up, there we go, 12 eight. So that engine stage without any fusion didn't really help us that much, but it also didn't really reduce the tune down much. So it, it's kind of worthless, but because it really bumped that up quite a bit without changing this any. It, and it really didn't change our overall time that much, so it's not worth installing. That's why I don't usually install those stages when it's got no fusions in it. So stage 5, stage 4 engine basically almost perform at the same level. Why mess with it? You're talking about a fusion difference, evil difference of 5 points, big deal. Leave, leave it off. And that's basically the three types of tunes that I play with. Um, and the, the one that is the most interesting to me is this uh, set up here. What, what is a grip-induced cliff drop of the EVO points to give you a dino-beating setup. The balance always ultimately is to try to get your car to be able to both do the drop on the EVO points and still keep a high enough EVO point to win and earn at least 1300 RP on average, or 1000 on average. As long as you're doing that, you're able to generate RP and generally beat your opponents and control trading if it's a trading situation. And that's always the goal. This car is simply not built enough, but I'm sure when I get it up to a point where I can get 1000 EVO and still run about 2 tenths, 3 tenths ahead of my dyno, it'll be a great car for me to continue to use in live. Lastly, as you max out a car, this kind of trickery with the tune will no longer work. So in some sense, not having a max car isn't a bad thing. It actually gives you something to play with. It gives you a chance to be in a more competitive position in the live lobby. So don't always shoot for maxing the car. What you should shoot for, though, is to max out the fusions. And I am still working on that with this car, and I will max it out. Maybe I will do an update video of this car with some tuning when it gets there. I hope uh, all this uh, talking and demonstration has enlightened you a little bit about the way the game works with tuning. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. I will try my best to answer it. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video, despite the fact that it's super long and I talked about 
a bunch of nonsense that you may not even get. I hope uh, again that you'll come back and check out my other videos. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I will be regularly updating it with various pieces of information that I discover, discover as I play the game. Thank you.